Your Classical Storytime is supported by the Minnesota College Savings Plan, the official 529 program for the state of Minnesota. Learn how you can invest for your child's college education and minimize your taxes at mnsaves.org. Welcome to Your Classical Storytime. I'm Julie, and this is the story of Thumbelina. Once upon a time, an old woman lived by herself in a faraway village. She was very lonely, in part because she didn't have any children. One day, she visited a neighbor who was a good witch. I know what you're thinking, a good witch? Yes, it's true, lots of witches are the good kind. The old woman asked the witch if she could help her with her loneliness. The witch gave her a tiny seed and said, Plant this seed in your garden. Soon it will sprout into a beautiful flower. And when it does, be sure to give it lots of love and care. The woman did as she was told. She planted the seed and then went to bed for the night. The next morning, she went outside, and there was the prettiest little flower bud she'd ever seen. Remembering the witch's instructions, she watered it well, and just for good measure, she gave its petals a little kiss. Suddenly, the flower's petals opened into a beautiful bloom. And to her amazement, in the middle of the petals was a tiny little girl. The girl was no bigger than the woman's thumb and the old woman instantly fell in love with her. She decided, because of her size, that she would name her Thumbelina. The woman took great care of Thumbelina. She made her a bed out of a polished walnut shell, and each night she gathered soft, fragrant flower petals from her garden for Thumbelina to use as blankets. As she cuddled under her petals, Thumbelina would lull the old woman to sleep with her beautiful singing voice. One night, a large frog heard Thumbelina singing. He hopped up to the window to get a closer look. Once Thumbelina had fallen asleep, the frog crept in through the window. Oh my! He exclaimed. This will make the perfect wife for my son. The frog grabbed the walnut shell with Thumbelina tucked inside and carried her off to the nearby river. Once he arrived at his home by the river, the frog said to his son, Look at the lovely bride I have brought you. With this, Thumbelina awoke. Bride? She thought, quite distressed. I didn't ask for such a thing. And why have these frogs taken me away from my mother? Thumbelina was very sad and scared. She was trapped on a lily pad, surrounded by water. The father and son frog went about building a mud house for the young frog and his bride-to-be. As Thumbelina began to cry, two minnows came swimming up. Why are you crying, tiny person? One of them asked. This frog has kidnapped me and says I'm going to marry his son. We'll get you out of this, the minnow said, and they chewed at her lily stalk until it broke free. Thumbelina floated on the lily pad, eventually coming to the river bank where she climbed ashore and began to walk. Soon she came to a tree, and she saw a small hole beside it. Since she was cold, she climbed inside to get warm. All of a sudden, she realized this hole was somebody's home. Come inside, dear, said the field mouse, who was standing in a large room filled with pebbles of corn. Oh, you're shaking. Let's warm you up. The mouse was kind to Thumbelina and invited Thumbelina to live with her. Thumbelina ate her fill of corn, and she had a warm place to sleep. To show her gratitude, Thumbelina would tell the mouse stories and sing to her. 
One day, the field mouse told Thumbelina a friend was stopping by. It was Mr. Mole. And guess what? He was looking for a bride. Oh, no, not this again, thought Thumbelina. When the mole arrived, he was dressed in a coat of the finest velvet. It was clear that he was very rich. The mole took one look at Thumbelina and fell head over heels in love. I will take you to my hole in the ground, he said, and we will be married. As the mole and Thumbelina were on their way to his underground home, they came upon a bird curled up on the ground. Oh, don't mind that old bird, the mole said. It is no longer living. But Thumbelina wasn't so sure. As she passed, she whispered, I will be back for you. That night, Thumbelina tried to sleep, but she couldn't stop thinking about the lonely bird. So she got up, tiptoed out of the dark, cold hole in the ground to check on the bird. She knelt down close and touched its soft feathers. Suddenly, she heard the bird's heartbeat. It wasn't dead. After a minute, the bird opened its eyes and said, Thank you for caring about me. Every night, Thumbelina snuck out of the mole's dark hole to nurse the bird back to health. Finally, the bird said to her, I am well enough to fly now, and I'm going to join my friends. Come with me. I'll take you away from here. Thumbelina didn't want to be with the mole, but she had had enough adventure. So she declined, and the next morning, the bird was gone. Thumbelina was happy the bird had healed, but she immediately missed him. What have I done? Thumbelina cried. I don't want to live in a hole in the ground and never see the sun. Most important, I do not want to marry this mole. One morning, as she came outside, she gazed up at the late autumn sun. Tears welled in her eyes at the thought of never seeing the sun again. Suddenly, could it be? The bird that she had rescued was soaring above and landed down beside her. This time, without thinking twice, Thumbelina hopped on the bird's back and the two flew toward the sunshine. They traveled for days across beautiful green fields and patches upon patches of brilliant flowers. Finally, they arrived at a large meadow filled with daisies and lilies. The birds swooped low, and Thumbelina jumped off onto a beautiful big pink flower. All of a sudden, behind a large pink petal, a crowned man no bigger than a thumb emerged. He was alarmed at the size of the bird, But once he saw Thumbelina, he was immediately enchanted by her glowing happiness and the way her hair shone in the sun's light. Would you like to take a walk with me? He asked Thumbelina. She was so surprised. She had never been asked before what she wanted to do. I would, she answered. She nodded to the bird, assuring her feathered friend that she felt safe. After spending many happy weeks together in the sunshine, the Flower King placed his brilliant crown upon Thumbelina's head and asked her to be his queen of the fairy kingdom. Again, Thumbelina was surprised, but pleased. The fairy king was the first one to ask her if she would marry him. Yes, she answered, and as a smile spread across her face, she grew a beautiful pair of wings and became the Flower Queen. And together, Thumbelina and the Flower King spent the rest of their lives caring for the flowers in the garden. And they lived happily ever after. The End Thanks for listening to your classical story time from American Public Media. Mm-hmm.